This is how you lazy pick huckleberries with binoculars. I want to get out and see if there's a lot on these bushes, so I'm just going to use my binoculars. Oh, look at them all. Look at all those tasty little morsels. I don't know. I think we can do better. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Addicted Fishing. Today, we're out here in the mountains living off the land. We're doing something fun. We're out here. We got Little. We got Sean. We got Dash Man here in the back. We got the Dish Pickle Assassin in the back of the truck. Our goal today is to get up here in the mountains, try to find some huckleberries, pick us a bag of huckleberries. Then we're gonna take the Dish Pickle Assassin, go find a lake, catch some trout, and do a little huckleberry sauce catch and cook for you guys. If you guys are new to this channel and you've never seen us before, we're Addicted Fishing. We aim to educate, entertain, and inspire anglers like you to go out and have more fun on the water or in the woods. So today, stick with us. We're gonna be out here all day long trying to find some food for ourselves, hopefully some food for our pups. It's gonna be a blast, stay tuned. So like I mentioned a second ago, you guys, what we basically are doing here, we're totally winging it. We came out into the woods. Basically, I just used some of my basic knowledge that I already knew about how to find huckleberries, but for those of you out there who have never even tried, it's really simple. What you wanna look for is like an alpine area. And what we have here, all I did this morning before we left the house is I got up Google Maps, opened it up, and you can find these kind of berries anywhere in North America, really, like it's an alpine area. All the Rocky Mountains, all the Cascade Range has these berries, and really there's not a lot of berries that look similar to them that can hurt you, so it's a really safe berry to go out and pick. And they're in a huge abundance a lot of time. So all I did this morning before we left the house, I opened my Google Maps, I zoomed out, I found different parts, different mountains in Oregon or Washington that I was gonna go pinpoint on, and I tried to find something over 3,000 feet. Normally, these things don't usually grow until July or August. This is the beginning of August right now. So we picked a high elevation. They start at the high elevations and they work their way down because they follow the moisture. So as the, and that's kind of reverse of how most things grow. They start at a low elevation and work their way up. So what we have here, just as a little thing on Google Maps, I did the terrain mode so I could see the elevations. And 4,000 feet is usually the magic number. What I did here, I found a road off of one of the main roads took that spur road all the way up, found that 4,000 foot elevation. You can see there's all those different water, of course, which is gonna help something grow. Saw some berries on the side of the road, got out of the truck, turned around, and what do you know? We got a field of huckleberries behind us. So let me show you what huckleberries really look like. So, first and foremost, of course, there's all kinds of bushes out here in the woods that look similar. Even here's one right next to it. This is more of just a willow tree. This is just a willow that's growing naturally. Right next to it is a huckleberry, and you see the differences in these two, and it's mainly just the size of the leaves and the colors. These huckleberry bushes will start to kind of turn to turn an orangish yellow as the season goes on and they start to dry out. But as soon as these things start to pop, you'll see all these little purple and blue berries that are growing on these huck or on these little bushes. So they usually stand about three to five foot tall always growing together and normally in an open area so if you go back in an area that had a forest fire 10 years ago and a lot of the trees have died or you know the area had been logged or anything of that sort where something has cleared out that tree mass because of course these berries need that sunlight to grow all right so lucky enough we followed our intuition we followed the map used our gut instinct to find these berries and landed on a gold mine. So I'm gonna show you some ripe berries. I'm gonna show you some unripe berries if you go here. I'm not actually seeing a whole lot that aren't super ripe. But what we have here is all these huckleberry bushes mixed in and that little tasty guy right there is a perfectly ripe one. And what you'll see is when you go to pick them, they'll be a little bit soft. They're not super soft, but they'll just have that little bit of malleable nature to them where they're not super rock hard and they're not that baby blue color. You want them almost that deep purple, like you see here. Oh my God, we're never gonna fill our bag. I'm gonna eat them all. Well, actually, here's some, some that actually aren't super ripe. So what you see, this bush has a ton of them on it, but they're all this really light blue color. And these are gonna be a little more sour. If you're making a jam, or you're making something kind of like what we're making today, it might work a little bit, but you don't wanna pick these if you're gonna wanna be eating them on ice cream or like using them to make a pie. You're gonna want those darker purple ones like we have over here, because those are gonna have a lot more flavor to them and a lot better tasting, just like that. That's what we're looking for. Oh, we found the honey patch here. Look at all these little morsels. That's what I'm talking about right there.
as you guys can see, my dog here is truly the best help for picking berries, aren't you? Aren't you, Tiny? Dad's trying to pick berries. And you're just in the way. Oh, you're not. Oh, what are you doing? You little menace, you. Oh, what are you doing? He's in the way. Goodness gracious. All right. So I think we got plenty for our recipe here. Now what we're gonna do is hop in the truck. We're gonna get our GPS out, try to find a lake nearby. Gonna get the old ditch pickle wet, put some rods in the water. We're gonna try to do some fly fishing and some gear fishing. We got all kinds of bait, all kinds of tackle. Let's find a lake, let's go catch some trout, and let's finish this recipe. pickle here get a couple rods rigged up seems like it's a, quite the happening spot you know they stock this lake a lot with a bunch of fish just recently so let's grab our rods let's get this boat in let's go out and catch us some fish for dinner so this is your perfect case everybody of rather be lucky than good we just pulled up oh my god i got him i got him i got him just pulled up to the boat ramp this lady's hauling up her kayak she goes and tells us the hatchery truck left about 30 minutes ago and just dumped 1,300 trout right at our feet here. So I said to Sean, why don't we just start fishing here? And here's our first one for the dinner table. Let's get him up here. Well, that was easy. Look out, little. look out, look out. This will have to work for a stringer for now. Okay. Here's the first one for the dinner table, guys. Beautiful little about 12 inch rainbow. Let's go ahead and toss them in here. Tie them off. I didn't even get a chance to show you guys what I was using. We got all kinds of stuff in the boat here. We got some hot shots. We got a little Brad's mini wiggler. I'm gonna rig up a little spinner on that other spinning rod. But all what I was using here, of course you guys know I like to fly fish. I'm just using my nine and a half foot fly rod, little floating line, and this little olive colored woolly bugger here. So let's give it another shot. I bet this works. Oh, there he is, got him, got him, got him. <laughs> oh, perfect. Oh, there he goes. That's all right. Don't cry over spilt milk. I'm sure it'll only take a second. Oh, oh god, there he was. Here we go. Got him, got him. Come on, stay on there. Stay on there. God dang, it came off. Well, before we leave, I'm gonna grab the spinner rod here. I'm gonna set up a little Panther Martin on there, and I always try to stick with the motto, you never leave fish to find fish. So. Just to make sure we have dinner, I want to catch one more here. Of course, I had the two almost on the stringer, but was being a dummy. So I'm going to grab the spinner rod. I'm going to throw a couple spinners really quick, and then we'll motor out to the deep part of the lake and see what happens. Eat. Too many stinking weeds over here. All right, a few too many weeds for this presentation here, guys. So, hang this one up. I'm gonna go park the truck. We've never even got a chance to park the truck so far. We got too excited and started fishing. So I'm gonna go park the truck, we'll load up in the boat. We're gonna try to buck the wind out into the middle of the lake here and get something going. Okay, so I'm doing here, everybody. Just going a little crappy bobber, a little jig head. I'm gonna try First off, just one of these little trout magnets because we've seen these things work so good in the past. Go with the little pinky here. Rig this bad boy up. Just like that. Two wraps around the top. And we're ready to go.
Okay guys, so here's the deal. Basically just switched angles on these fish. As we went to leave, we see this entire school of fish in here. So we're gonna keep playing with them. We're trying to figure out how to fish around all these weeds. So let's go kind of just dissect it, break it down, see what we can make happen here. So what I got here, I just took a little, I got a power egg on here. I got my power bait and I got a couple of those badass salmon eggs here. I'm just gonna walk over, kind of stay back a little bit. Oh boy, there's some monsters in there, man. Look at them all. Okay, we're not even shallower yet. Oh, they're jumping all over next to the bobber. There he is. Ooh, man, I lost him. Fly fishing with the bobber now. I think I figured him out though. I finally got shallow enough. I'm right in the school of them. Come on, boys. Oh, he's eating it. He's eating it. Oh, got hung up in the grass again. Okay. That's kind of the beauty of these little, these little bait balls too, these little power eggs, is that this fish can just chew on them and chew on them and chew on them and you don't have to rebait every single time. So, all right, here we go. I got a good feeling about that cast. Oh, I can see him all over. Oh, he's eating it. Look at they're swarming it. Can you see all those? Oh, oh God, oh, what's killed myself? Oh my God, you guys, we're fishing in a trout pond right now. Here we go. Oh, oh, they're chasing it. Got him, yes, got him. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> Woo, that looks like dinner to me. What do you guys think? Oh, that was awesome. So all I did there, you guys, I took that little jig head, put a little bit of bait on it, and all I was doing there was trying to read the depth from the other side of the lake. We couldn't tell the depth. We couldn't, we kept, you know, misjudging it and setting too deep and coming back with too many weeds. So all I was doing was I was just constantly moving a little bit shallower, a little bit shallower. Got two for the frying pan. Let's keep trying. I think I'm gonna try the fly rod again. What was happening, I already know, is I was letting my fly sink way too deep and it wasn't getting down in front of him, but I want him to chase it now. Let's see what happens. And I got the, the wind at my back, so it's gonna help. Oh, here we go, here we go, there's five or six of them following it. Oh my God, that was a good one. Oh, there he was, oh my God. This is so cool. This is like cheating. Here we go. Oh, got him, got him. Yes. The best part of all this, you guys, is these freaking glasses. Oh, that was a nice one too. That one was gonna feed Sean for a week. Right, Sean? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Fish in a barrel, fish in a barrel. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I got him. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So now that we got two nice ones, I'm just gonna start catching and releasing these things, guys. There's just no point, no point in my mind to sit here and take more than we need. We're just gonna do just enough to have our catch and cook work out nicely. Oh my God, oh there he is again. Go oh, every freaking cast. This is so cool, this is so cool. What a beautiful little rainbow. Hooked perfectly through the snout. Get him back in there so he's nice and fresh still. Sweet. Okay, let's see here again. There's a black cloud of them in front of us. They're swarming, they're swarming, they're all chasing it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, got him. <laughs> oh, goodness. What a beautiful little trout though, my gosh. Oh, there we go, self-release. He's migrating, it's like a salmon. So, now I switched over to the bobber again. Badass salmon eggs. Let's throw it into the feeding frenzy here and see what happens. Okay, there it is. Get ready. Oh, they're swarming it. They're swarming it. They're swarming it. Oh, oh, that's a bite, that's a bite, that's a bite. Oh, oh. Oh, there he is. Got him. Oh, almost killed my camera guy. <laughs> you see guys, all I'm doing here, I'm just sticking those right on the hook. And I'm sure, a little bit of the issue 
that I'm having with hooking these fish is because those eggs are kind of covering up that hook shank. But I like doing that a lot with that little jig head like that because it makes it so easy. You don't have to add any weight. That weight's already on there with that jig head. Put it down, get it in front of them. And in a situation like this, you pretty much just got to get it in there. Got him. Oh my God. Keep losing them. Oh, I still got my bait though. Still got my bait. Throw back out here and do the wind drift. Oh, he got it already. Oh my God. Let's see. Can I get him on a bear hook? All this is is a little shiny jig head. Little shiny jig head. Bobber. I'm gonna give it a little movement maybe. Oh, I had him instantly. Oh my God. We're getting him without even any bait, you guys. Yep, we're literally catching him on a bear hook now, you guys. This is, it's graduated into not even any bait. Instead of using anything in the tackle box, we're using nothing in the tackle box. It's a little bit, oh, got him, got him, got him, yes! Oh yeah, yes! Oh baby! That one's an eater. That one's an eater, everybody. Another nice little trout. Woo! Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, we're losing him. We got some cheerleaders over here on the bank, everybody. And I pulled the dummy move. Almost lost it forever. Oh, 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 wrestling him. Wow. It's like I've never done this before. I'm just getting a little too excited, I think. We're gonna add him to the stringer here. Okay, what do you guys think? Think we can get another one on a bear hook? This, we're gonna title this video, Catching Trout on a Bear Hook, because fishing is so good. Okay, here we go. Just give it a little twitching action. Got him, oh my God. He was a head shaker, dude, he shook me. He shook me. Here we go, oh God, oh instant. Oh my God, I hardly even hit the water. Guys, this is insanity. If you can't tell, I'm having fun. Here we go. Move it, move it, move it. Got him, yes. Oh, it's so cool, it's so cool, everyone. This is so cool. This one I'm just gonna let go again. That's a shiny one, look how rainbow he is. My goodness, my goodness. Sometimes, like I said earlier, guys, it's better to be lucky than good. This just goes to show you. You know, I explain it a lot in our, in our videos, in our tutorials, and all our stuff. There's no trout, there's no gimmicks out there. There's absolutely not a single gimmick that you can go to the store and buy because everything works and sometimes nothing works. But just being in front of biting fish and having that opportunity to get in front of fish that want to eat, just like we have here, is all it takes. So keep at it. All you guys, oh, got him again. All you guys out there that are fighting to try to catch fish, trying your hardest to just get good at fishing, just keep trying because one day you're going to show up and this is going to happen and you're going to be catching them on a bare hook. Nothing. <laughs> a bear hook. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> We're getting heckled, everybody. Everybody on the bank is hating us. Yeah, here we go. One last one on the bear hook, guys. Got him. Got him. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. I am so excited right now, I'm like a kid at a candy store. Got him. There you go. All right, everybody. Well, the wind really picked up out here. It's getting late. We're not actually gonna try to go out on the lake here because I think our battery's gonna die by the time we fight this wind all the way to the far side of this lake. So we're gonna get in the boat, we're gonna clean our stuff up, we're gonna go find a picnic table, and we're gonna get this special little recipe going. If you guys like this video, be sure to drop a little comment below with what you think of these. I know this is one of my favorite things to do is just kind of find those natural bounties, get those special meals that you only kind of get one time a year, which is summertime trout and those huckleberries that we're finding here. So drop a comment below with some more ideas for us. Stay tuned, let's go get some, some lunch going.
So first things first, I'm kind of prepping myself here. What I like to do is I like to go like two little layers of foil, create like a little, little pan here, like a little turkey pan almost, because this is gonna kind of be a little bit messy. I'm gonna make my little pan just by pinching the corners here, folding them over, pinch them and fold them, pinch them and fold them, just like that. But what we're gonna start with first is, we've got a few different seasonings here for the fish, but we'll talk more about that in just a minute. I'm gonna get some more huckleberries, probably about two cups is all I'm gonna use for this, for these four fillets. So just like that, yeah, about a cup and a half. There's about two cups. Add just a little bit of water, some nice clean water here. Just like so. Now all I'm gonna do is try to get some of those bugs, maybe a couple of those pine needles. I know we all need a little fiber in our diet, but get a couple of these bugs, a couple of these pine needles out of here. Kind of rub those things around like that, roll them together, keep picking all that stuff out. There we go. We're looking pretty good there, pretty clean, and clean enough for, for my taste buds. Now we roll those around just like that. Just gonna strain them with my hand. And this is just very, very, very simple recipe here, you guys. All I'm really gonna do is just kind of make, a, but again, I've been saying it all day long, kind of like a jelly or a jam, like a marmalade. So my ingredients to this are very, very simple. A little bit of salt, I'm gonna put a little bit of Johnny seasoning in there, and I just grabbed a couple packets of sugar in the raw. This is just raw cane sugar. And so we're gonna put these in here, we're gonna get them going, get a nice little simmer going. We're gonna add that sugar in the raw, stir it around, stir it around till it keeps simmering, keep simmering, starts to get a little bit caramelized. Then we're gonna add it to our fish. All right. So we'll let those get started here. What I'm gonna do next, it's gonna lay out my fish. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of cleaning. Ran out of paper towels. I'm sure all you were laughing at me for using bath tissue, but hey, improvise. It's like the Boy Scouts say, always be prepared. Now it's prepared. So there's our first piece ready to go on the sheet. Just gonna lay that in there just like so. Man, those berries already smell good. Just like that. She's starting to get nice and hot. These berries are starting to get a little softer there. My goodness, that smells amazing. So now what I'm gonna do here, is I'm gonna add just a very, very light hint of seasoning. So I got a little bit of Johnny seasoning salt, plain, good old fashioned. Just gonna add a little dousing of it, just to kind of tingle those taste buds. Give me a little flavor, and I'm actually gonna put just a tiny bit of that in my sauce there. I got a little bit of minced garlic, and you guys know I love garlic, so. Just a little bit of minced garlic across that. And it sounds funny mixing that garlic and that salt with this, with these berries, but really that little bit of tanginess, that little bit of flavor is gonna go a long way when we start putting all this different stuff on there. So, we got a good little boil going. Next thing I'm gonna do, you can see here, those are starting to cook pretty nicely. I'm gonna put three or four packets of that sugar in there. What you're gonna see happen here, now that I've added that little bit of sugar, is you're gonna start to see that caramelization. You're gonna to start to see all the, a lot more juice start getting pulled out of those berries, which also that little bit of salt helps a lot of too. And we're gonna go with three today. I'm feeling like three is gonna be our magic number. So, you start to see that stuff here. I'm actually gonna start whipping these things up a little bit. So again, I kinda of want this to turn into a jelly or a jam. I don't necessarily want all these berries staying together, I want almost like a paste to come out of all this. I'm gonna let that keep simmering there for just a minute. Oh, we're looking pretty good. Oh, we're looking darn good. So, this is what it should start to look like, you guys. I got a nice little paste going. Get it all on one side, nice and mixed up. All right, so we can kill that. Our marmalade is done. Bon Appetit. I'm gonna let our grill start to heat up a little bit with that fish on it. It's not gonna hurt anything at all. Open that bad boy back up. And here is the sweet, sweet moment of truth. Just gonna do a nice drizzle across all that fish. Oh my goodness. Spread that stuff around just a little bit. Kinda give that a nice little coating. We're gonna cover this bad boy up and we're gonna let it start cooking. 
The next thing that's about to happen is pure magic. All right, so we're gonna grab our trusty oven mitts here, the little pine cones. Oh my gosh. So we're gonna try to show you what some done fish looks like. A good telltale sign right off the bat is these little turned up ends here. You see how these little ends of this, each of these fillets are starting to curl up a little bit, starting to curl in, show that they're getting a little bit done. And with this sauce, it's gonna be hard to overcook this, of course, because it's added a lot of moisture. But what I like to do to check is to go with the thickest piece of meat you can find in there, which is this one right here. I stick that fork right into it and I just turn it to the side. You see how that's still just a tad mushy. It's a little bit flaky there. There's still a lot of moisture down in between there that you can see. So I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna let it cook for about another five, 10 minutes, and I'm gonna turn that grill off, let it start to cool down, and we're gonna chow. Okay, well we give it about another five minutes or so. Go back to our oven mitts here. And that looks pretty perfect to me. So I'm gonna do my twist test again. Stick her in there. See how, oh yeah, see how easy that flaked apart. Let's go ahead and kill our grill here. Let this stuff cool down just a minute and then I'm gonna start eating. Actually, I got an invincible mouth. I'm starting now, I don't even care. Our lips are all gonna be purple after this, but I'm actually already drilling. Oh my God. With the sugar, that little bit of garlic, Tiny little hint of salt. That has to be some of the best trout I've ever had. If you guys have never tried this, even if you have to buy some blueberries or some huckleberries or something, obviously nothing's better than going out and picking them yourself, but this is a delicious recipe. I can't wait to try it on some salmon or some steelhead or something, but, mm, God. I think I just found my new favorite. So today, again, you guys, if you haven't already, drop a comment below with what you guys thought of today's episode. I know I had an absolute blast up here in the mountains. It was so good to beat the heat, get out of town. Middle of August here, we've been sweating our butts off down in the valley. And it felt so nice to get up in the mountains, see the mountains themselves, be up here in the trees and out here in mother nature. Got to catch some fish, got to pick some wild berries. And man, I'm gonna have a smile on my face the whole way home. Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. Be sure again, give us a thumbs up. Go down here and hit subscribe. Turn that bell notification on to all notifications so that you see every time we have one of these awesome videos coming out. Thank you so much again for tuning in. You guys stay fishy. We'll see you out there.